U.S. President Trump is scaling back travel to Cuba and restricting business dealings with the country's military. It's a clamp down of his predecessor's move to normalize relations with Cuba. He called the previous deal misguided and one-sided. Therefore, effective immediately, I am canceling the last administration's completely one-sided deal with Cuba. All right. Well, we've spoken in the past with Cuba Ventures, a company that's looking to capitalize on perhaps an opening up of the Cuban economy. Joining us now for an update on how things look now in the wake of this new initiative, Steve Marshall, the CEO of Cuba Ventures. Thanks so much for joining Good us. Morning. So uh, when we talked, we talked about, you know, the prospects of, you mm -hmm. know, American businesses going there and, a, and an industry growing from there. Now that you have what seems to be a reversal of the Obama administration's policy, policy, what does that mean for future expansion in Cuba? What it means is, first of all, uh, there is no reversal. That's the first issue. It sounded like one. It sounded like one in the rhetoric, but if you actually look at the details, what you have is that Obama made uh, several changes. One was um, uh, redeploying the uh, embassy staff and the embassy opening in Havana, um, uh, commercial flights to Cuba. Um, uh, travel to Cuba from the United States, negotiations with U.S. companies in Cuba, and many, many other aspects. The only issues that were effectively rolled back beyond the rhetoric was um, that the, uh, the, the, the U.S. companies can, cannot work with businesses that are controlled by the Cuban military or security forces. So they could still go there if it does and not... If it did not include those entities. So every other entity, and in fact negotiations are ongoing, um, and, and these have not been rolled back. The same applies... Is that palatable to the Cuban government? Or was that part of their mandate of accepting American businesses that it must be through joint ownership? Uh, well, the, the, the American businesses that do not deal or negotiate with businesses owned by the Cuban military will be exempted. Mm. So therefore, the only other change, in fact there are just two changes, one is do not deal with the Cuban military, two is that people to people travel for individuals who are not part of a group is no longer permitted. So that means that all of the travel that our company does, which has been with groups and with, um, um, and, and, and obviously now based upon our um, intent to acquire an agency in Florida, which would then validate obviously our right to be able to sell uh, travel to the, the Americans directly with, through these packages. But it is important to note that if, if you look beyond the rhetoric, look at the executive order, see what exactly was said, you will find that there are those, those two changes and no, and no other. Commercial flights continue, cruise lines continue, um, Starwood continues to operate, and so unless you're dealing with the military, there are no problems at all. And for us as a company, this is good news because what we've had is six months of waiting to see what exactly Trump would say. And what he has actually said is almost nothing that would count our objective as a company and will not affect our revenue in any way at all. So then going into this, what did you think the market opportunity was and what is it today, just to put a dollar figure around you know, the before and after? The, the, the dollar opportunity based upon the deals that we're looking at, the companies that we're working with for our travel division and the continued advancement of that, um, you're looking at billions of dollars. I mean, and as it I remains said, remains unchanged, I guess. It, as I said, the last time I was here, this is Cuba is the largest opportunity in this hemisphere, based upon the desires of the U.S. We must also take note that there are several bills that were submitted to Congress. Coincidentally, a few weeks before Mr. Trump was down in um, Miami, requesting to repeal the embargo. So what are we preparing for here, at least in my perspective? We're looking at a situation where the, the U.S. is posturing itself to lift the embargo. The last thing that the United States wants, if they're looking at lifting the embargo, is having the Cuban military controlling key facets of the economy. It's pretty obvious to me that that is the case. Now, we have a second issue, too, and that is on the 24th of February 2018, 
we will no longer have a president in Cuba with the second name of Castro. Okay, so those two things together, in my opinion, and the fact that we have numerous, I was just down in Washington, I mean, th th there are so many Republican congressmen requesting that the embargo be lifted. We have seen no action beyond the rhetoric from the, uh, the Trump administration. Of course, I mean, you know, Mr. Trump was down in, in, in Miami and in Little Havana. So obviously he has to, to, to make a position, and that position, as far as I'm concerned, is valid. But that, that is the situation I see. So to your point, you announced that you've signed this letter of intent to buy this uh, licensed Florida travel agency. Exactly. I just want to go back to some of the language you used during your last visit here. Yes. And kind of compare where we are now. Of course. Um, at the time... Um, you had suggested in your most recent quarter that you'd seen a massive increase in revenue yes. and that was f from U.S. tourists. So in mm -hmm. terms of everything you're saying now, mm -hmm. you're painting a pretty positive picture. Would you say yes. you're expecting another massive increase in revenue tied to money from U.S. tourists? Yes. Our, the adjustments that we've made are very simple, and those are that we, we're looking at people-to-people -people travel. People-to-people -people travel continues to be permitted. It continues to be permitted with groups. By acquiring the agency in Florida, it gives us the ability to publish on our websites compliant packages that, are, that can be sold into the U.S. market to over 10 million visitors. Bear in mind, we have 35 million visitors to our 432 websites now. 38.9% of those visitors are from the United States of America. So we have the market. It's captured. We don't need the media. We don't need the advertising. What we do, what we were waiting for, and we have now received, is the feedback from the administration. We have that feedback. We know what it says. And now we're prepared to deploy these particular offers into the U.S. market through legal channels, having acquired an agency when that takes place. Steve, interesting context. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you very much. Steve Marshall, the CEO of Cuba Ventures. Coming up next, we're going to hear from one analyst on what John...